It's Eric here with the weekly lesson video again, and so we've been dealing with some finger picking stuff for the last couple weeks. Uh, we're gonna let that ride for you guys all this week and give you an extra little week to practice it. But in keeping with some of the stuff that we're talking about there, I want to bring up one little quick topic for this week that if you are working on any finger picking tunes, you might be able to utilize this in those songs. And I don't know if you've heard me mention it before, some of you have, it's a thing I like to call economy of motion. So I'm not talking about economy picking or sweet picking or any of that stuff today. I am just talking about being efficient in your changing. And you know, we've talked a little bit about it with some of these exercises, like the one, two, three, four exercises and trying to get your hands to move smoothly and so on and so forth. And this is gonna be a little exercise for you to work on this week with a couple chords that you're probably all really familiar with and use a ton and are annoyingly in like 9,000 songs. And I think I understated that. So, we're gonna work with uh, what I lovingly call the pop versions of G, D, and then we're gonna use C add nine and E minor seven. And we're gonna use these specifically for the purpose of working on this exercise. So. We don't have to deal with any strumming or anything this week. I'll get rid of some of that distortion so it's a little cleaner for us, though. A little nicer. What we are working on is holding down fingers that don't need to move. So, starting with our G chord, we're going to use the four finger G chord, which is second finger on the sixth string, first finger on the fifth string, third finger on the second string, pinky on the first string. So, we're going to go from G to D. When we go from G to D, the reason why this four finger G gets used so much or why it's so convenient is that D note right there, that third finger note, stays in place when we go down to D. So what I want you to do is I want you to work on making the change by keeping this finger still and then pulling these two down to where they need to go for D. So I'll come back to G. And if you look super close, you'll notice that these two fingers pull down into the D chord. This makes no move. So that's our first one. Now we're going to come down to D. And again, dealing with this economy of motion, a lot of people look at D and C and go, oh, it's such a huge chord change. I can't make that. It's so difficult. Well, I'm going to show you two. I'm going to show you D to C, and I'm going to show you D to C add nine. Starting with D to C, what I want you to look at is that these two fingers down here on the D chord, they're on the exact right strings they need to be on, sorry, the exact right frets they need to be on, and the same position to each other as a C chord. They are the top of the C chord. So in order to make this change, what I want you to practice is you're going to release your index finger, and you are going to try moving these two fingers right here together up to their C position. So let's come back to D. There they are there. We're going to move them together up to C and then back down to D. And you'll see that change if you look, those two fingers are just moving nicely together like that, okay? So we say this is economy of motion because what we're doing is trying to minimize the amount our fingers have to move 
And in this case, we have such a common thread between those two fingers, we don't have to do a ton with them. We just got to find the right strings. So you can start making them like that. D to C at 9. A lot like D to G. Now, so for those of you that don't know, C at 9, I like to call mini G. It's exactly like a G chord. With this version we're doing. But we take these two fingers here, instead of being on 6 and 5, they're on 5 and 4. So if you're like, every rose has a thorn. It's a very common sound. So when we're doing D to C at 9, Again, this finger right here, staying put. It's our anchor, it's our center point. But the couple of the other fingers I want you to watch out for, really pay attention to is, look where my pinky is when I'm playing D. It's sitting already underneath my third finger to pop on for the C at nine. So it's really not doing anything. The other one I want you to look at, my first finger. This is moving up a string. It's moving so little that in comparison to my second finger, it looks like it's not moving at all. Okay, so we're trying to, again, same as going D to regular C, we're trying to limit our amount of motion here. Same as going with G to D. So when you do this, you're gonna work on moving that second finger up to the top, and then the little tiny movements that the one and four are gonna make. So D, second finger, C at nine. D, second finger, C at nine. Okay? So the other one is E minor seven. And again, a lot like G. Here's your G chord, E minor seven. We're gonna do this the easy way. All we're gonna do is take our second finger off. And we're going to do that without straightening up and giving anybody the finger. That's not cool. G. E minor 7. G. E minor 7. So E minor 7, like I said, a lot like G. These are down here on 1st and 2nd strings. This is up here. We're just popping a finger off. I want you to notice how when I make this change, that middle finger doesn't get pulled down to here, it doesn't get pulled straight up, doesn't go anywhere else, it literally just pops off the string. Again, minimizing our motion. So we can do E minor 7, C at 9. So now, when I go to make that change, that second finger, because I know I'm going to C at 9, is hanging out over the fifth string. So all I'm really doing is popping it on and moving my index down to the fourth string like it's supposed to be. E minor 7, C at 9. E minor 7, C at 9. Not doing a whole lot. Okay? A lot of these come into play if you want to play things like um, Every Rose Has a Thorn play like a Darius Rucker version of um, Wagon Wheel. Uh, you can also look at things like Wonderwall. So all we're doing here, and looking at all those chord changes, G to D. Doesn't move, right? Keep it nice and tidy. See that pinky finger just pops off, doesn't go flying away or do this. This is the one I really don't like to see. Fingers going underneath the fretboard. That's bad. That's real bad. Keep everything over the strings. D to C at nine.
watching those two move together right there. D to E minor 7. See how those fingers are just moving a little bit? This is all going to set us up for next week because I'm going to do it. We're going to do the crab. And that's a, a situation where all our fingers are moving. You can see as one finger comes off or as the pairs come off, the other ones are moving. That again is an economy of motion thing. So just take these four simple chords, G, C, A9, D, I add five because we actually have the regular C, and E minor seven. And just practice those couple spots of keeping that third finger planted or keeping your other fingers hovering over them. You will find that this might be a bit unusual for you if you're used to sort of always taking your fingers off and building your chords or building them what I call backwards, which is from the bottom up. Uh, also not really a great thing. Um, so you may find it a bit of a challenge, but I do think that, you know, Give it a little bit of time, a good bit of practice. Pay attention to a couple chord patterns or songs that you're playing that you're using these chords in. Maybe you'll find that it starts to settle in a little bit easier. And you may also find that your chord changes are happening a lot faster. So good luck with that. Uh, I guess you can call it me playing lazy. Anyway, kind of me emotion. That's my way to describe it. So like I said, good luck. Happy practicing.